Now the devil tries everything to hinder the mission of the church today, including violence, just heard about it today, hostile environments, persecution, discouragement, confusion, internal bickering, distractions, false doctrines, attacks against God's people. Let me tell you, this is a very handy device. But if you were here this morning, you heard Melody Mason say, we need to surrender these to God because they can be so destructive. You go online, you can hear all kinds of weird things about church leaders and about me. <laughs> well, I want to tell you, we don't worry about that because we're chosen for mission. So we have internal and external disagreements and denigration of the Word of God. Ted, where are Seventh-day Adventists being persecuted? Seriously, where? We always hear this language thrown around like SDAs are some endangered people group. What persecution are SDAs facing? What you guys really mean, because I hear it all the time, is that your theology is critically examined and critiqued, which you guys label as attack and persecution. Which is rich, considering that would mean by your own standards, you guys have to be the biggest persecutor and attacker of Christians worldwide. It's hard-coded into your movement. Your prophetess claims our prayers are an abomination to God. God's rejected us for rejecting your novel message. Jesus looks at us with displeasure. Our churches are filled with evil angels masquerading as Christians. Satan's taken control of our churches. We're worse than heathen. We're a part of the wicked world. And on and on and on. This is another classic case of the Catch-22 double standard you guys are caught in. It's attack and persecution from Satan when someone critiques your theology, yet you guys love critiquing everyone else's theology. No one's persecuting you guys, sir. Christians in the Middle East and Nigeria and elsewhere, that's who's persecuted. <laughs> Beheaded for the Lord Jesus Christ, not the Sabbath, not for the SDA message. For the true gospel and faith in the person and work of Jesus. And it's shameful that you try and position the SDA church as some mass martyr complex. You guys are supposedly going to take a stand one day for the Seventh-day Sabbath, but can't even handle someone critically examining your beliefs? That is not a good sign. You mentioned the SDA church, uh, or, or that SDAs go online and hear all sorts of weird things about SDA uh, church leaders. Ah, you mean answering Adventism, Ted. <laughs> yes, we're here. We're not going anywhere, my friend. You say you aren't worried about it, but the time will come when you can't just dismiss us as being some fringe keyboard warrior platform. We have people reaching out from Australia, Africa, China, Belgium, all over the globe who want to partner in this effort, who want to get boots on the ground active in their countries and pull Adventists out of the fires. So you can say whatever you want about us being weird or whatever. We're in a different era, my friend. This is not the 1980s anymore. <laughs> You're going to have to start dealing with the substance of what we say. Not just do drive-by hit jobs thinking it's going to keep people from hearing the truth. Which is what your guys' MO has been for decades. You say you aren't worried, yet you're mentioning it from the annual council stage. If you aren't worried, then why are you even mentioning it? Document down this stream, my friends. Document it down. 
The day will come when the SDA church gives their next report on retention rates and answering Adventism will, by God's provision, have been a key part in making the numbers tank. Not going to work anymore, sir. And you need to learn that not all former Adventists are the same. We don't all share the same beliefs by virtue of being former Adventists. And Paul tells us in Philippians 1, I'm not to fear enemies of the gospel because it's a sign of your destruction. But to us, it's a sign of our salvation. Truth is the anvil that can wear out any hammer, which is why we aren't afraid of any of your theology. And I concede personally nothing to you guys, as you're going to see momentarily. Not the Sabbath, not the law, none of it. And your guys' apologists, recycled arguments from the pioneers are not going to work on this platform and our positions. 